Public Auto Groups are seeing solid supply gains and $2,000 worth of savings on new cars are coming up. Some of the largest dealer groups are also publicly traded dealerships and that's actually very handy because it gives us a ton of interesting visibility into the car market. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth, the homework gal. A car market update is on the agenda. As you'll see illustrated here in a moment, friends, you can save $200 for every month that you wait to buy a new car headed into the end of the year. Yep. Lots of great info to share today, and we have a bonus role play at the end with me and Liz to help those of you who are out car shopping right now. I think what everyone will take away from today's show is that better deals are on the way in the coming months, but honestly, we aren't likely to see car deals as good as those prior to the pandemic anytime soon. That's a work in progress. The $3,800 profit per new unit you'll hear about in a moment at year's end is still well above pre-pandemic levels. New vehicle supplies have been steadily improving, but also remain below pre-pandemic levels. Luxury and import brand vehicles, however, do continue to face some supply challenges. They are the worst. That said, we are still recommending that if you can wait, that you don't have a desperate immediate need for a vehicle right now, that you should save your tax return money, wait a bit longer, and give prices time to fall further. Wait at least until June. Save your money, friends. It's only a few short months away. After a protracted inventory shortage, supplies of new vehicles at U.S. public car dealership groups finally showed solid signs of improvement at the end of 2022. But there's a catch. Oh, there's always a catch. Yes, the public groups reported meaningful gains in inventory, particularly for domestic brand vehicles. But they also noted in fourth quarter earnings calls over the last few weeks that luxury and import brand vehicles continued to be in much shorter supply. Sure. This could have a lot to do with why you folks keep seeing higher prices for Toyota and Honda brand cars. While retailers, automakers, and industry analysts predict continued supply chain improvements and a broader return to normalcy in the coming months, new vehicle inventory levels still has a long way to go to reach pre-pandemic numbers. Penske Auto Group Inc. CEO Roger Penske, for example, noticed this month that Penske's inventory remains way below our historical levels despite the company's recent gains in supply. Here's where the six major public dealership groups stood on supply at year end and how things look there. AutoNation closed out Q4 2022 with a 19 day supply. Asbury closed Q4 with a 26 day supply. Group One had a 21 day supply. We'll come back to Lithia with some interesting details in a moment. Penske had an 18 day supply and Sonic had a 24 day supply. So more on Lithia. New vehicle supply at Lithia Motors Inc. rose to 47 days at the end of December. The best levels of any of the public groups in improvement from 39 days at the end of September and 24 days at 2021's year end. Lithia's day supply calculations include in-transit vehicles and figures from its Canadian operation. Lithia executives foresee that improving supply will lead to more incentive activity from automakers in 2023. Wasn't Lithia one of the smaller public players not long ago? Yes, they were. You might wonder how Lithia has nearly doubled the inventory of longtime rival AutoNation. Lithia Motors Inc., once the smallest publicly traded dealership group before embarking on a multi-year dealership buying spree, surpassed longtime number one AutoNation Inc. in new vehicles sold in 2022. Lithia retailed 271,596 new vehicles last year, up 4.2%, and more than 40,000 vehicles more than AutoNation, which retailed 229,971 new vehicles, a 12% drop in 2022. Lithia's COO Chris Holshu said last week, our expectation now is that this supply and demand equation moderating in 2023, based on product line, based on OEM, we're going to see additional support that we haven't seen in the last couple of years in overall incentives and rebates. And that will help us moderate the impact that everyone feels in 2023. That's what we've been saying, friends. We don't see manufacturers dropping MSRP, but we do see a return of incentives and rebates with most car makers. Lithia CEO Brian DeBoer said, new vehicle inventory is rebuilding, but at a less uniform rate and varied by automaker. So as Kevin just said, while most will, not every car maker will be rolling out incentives and rebates. Lithia's CFO, Tina Miller, said something very interesting. She expects Lithia's average new vehicle gross profit will continue to come down this year as supply and demand trend back towards pre-pandemic levels. Miller said an assumed decline of $200 per month throughout the year would move Lithia's average to around $3,800 by the end of 2023, which would be a little above pre-pandemic level, she said. There's that $3,800 in profit we mentioned, but at year's end, at a rate of $200 per month, 
Think about that. Don't dealers frequently tell us they're losing money on new cars? Yes, they do. And here's a public auto group, Lithia, one of the biggest dealer groups out there, saying they expect their profits per unit to be down around $3,800, and it will get there by dropping $200 per month from where it's at now. Let's reverse the math on this so that you can see profit per new unit right now at Lithia is 5800 bucks. Yeah. Save an extra $200 per month headed into year's end with Lithia. Patience seems worth it to me. Yep. Lithia is pursuing a goal of $50 billion in annual revenue by the end of 2025 with dealer acquisitions playing a major role. Now, back in a moment after this message from our very own Mary Jo. Hello. I'm Mary Jo from the Homework Guide team. Don't Kevin and Elizabeth do a great job? We are so proud of every show our team puts out, carefully researched for accuracy, and designed to help car buyers just like you. If you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below and ring the bell so you get notifications about coming shows. Thank you for listening. And by the way, if you haven't already noticed, check out the light pattern on the ceiling. Pretty cool, huh? Now moving on to Group 1, Group 1 Automotive Inc. reported 8,000 new vehicles in inventory in the U.S. at the end of 2022, reflecting a 21-day supply. That's up six days from the end of September when Group 1 had just 15 days of supply in the U.S. While both numbers remain low, they are an improvement over the end of 2021 when new vehicle inventory in the U.S. was at just a nine-day supply. Group 1 CEO Daryl Kenningham in late January noted that the inventory gains involved primarily domestic brands with import-based vehicles remaining very constrained. That's particularly true with Toyota and Lexus, brands for which Group 1's supply continued to be very tight at a combined four days supply, Kenningham said. As Lithia predicts over the coming months, Kenningham predicted that inventory and profit margins will continue to normalize. We expect a gradual decline in new vehicle margins over the course of 2023 as inventory continues to recover, Kenningham said. We do, however, expect normalized new vehicle margins to eventually settle above our pre-pandemic levels. So here's another public auto group executive saying numbers won't return back to pre-pandemic levels. <laughs> so don't hold your breath on that. Right. We have a bonus for you today if you happen to be out shopping this challenging car market right now. We're going to give you some negotiating help with a little role play between Kevin and myself. If you missed us saying this before, it's very important that you download and print off the FTC rigs from our website, thehomeworkguy.com. I can't tell you how many people I reply to email and text to say that exact same thing. We also have another testimonial video to share with you later this week from our viewer, Joy, who used our training and the FTC documents to get an awesome car deal. Read these documents, highlight the important notes that will help you, and today we're going to tell you how to use them and what you say to a dealer who is telling you that you must pay the junk fees they've put into your car deal. Pay close attention and write this down, friends. To get a partial list of junk fees, print off the list on our website and take them with you too. Just be aware that dealers are constantly giving their fees new names after someone like us exposes them, so be aware that only the state sales tax and title and license fees are legitimate fees and are mandatory to pay. Those are the government charges. Government charges. Ask your DMV yourself how much they are. Know that any fee by any name, any fee that is taxable is nothing but a junk fee. I'm going to run through the list fast because the entire list is already printed and available on our website, thehomeworkguy.com. Dealer prep fee, advertising fee, regional or co-op advertising fee, <laughs> dealer advertising fee, dealer inspection fee, PDI fee, same as inspection fee, ADM fee, additional dealer markup, ADP fee, additional dealer profit, market adjustment fee, delivery destination fee on a used car, nitrogen filled tires fee, a document fee, e-filing fee or electronic filing fee, which is same as the doc fee, dealer services fee, eh. accommodation fee, and yes, even a sales commission fee that shows up on this deal that we'll discuss here in a moment. All of these are fake junk fees. They are all taxable by your state and just go into the dealer's pocket as you're going to hear a dealer proudly admit to adding to the thousands of dollars they are already making on your car. You must not let the dealer get away with charging you these junk fees. Are you ready, Liz? I'm ready. Okay, I'll represent the finance manager and we've just offered you a car deal with a few fees and what our sales manager described as mandatory add-ons. Yes, there's a sales commission fee on this buyer's order as well. And for the benefit of our audience, this is an actual deal offered to us by our viewer, Ebenezer. Yep. He's not Mr. Scrooge. No. He submitted it for our review. Okay, Liz, here's your 2023 Honda CRV written up exactly as you requested. 
MSRP is 36900 and we're discounting the vehicle $3,429 in your favor to come up with an adjusted sale price of $33,479. Well, I can appreciate your price discount, but it's really clear to me that you want to take it all back with $1,200 in Dar Cars Assurance, whatever that is, but clearly something that I don't want and I don't want to pay for. It protects your investment, Liz. The only investment I'm interested in protecting is the investment I'll be using to pay for this vehicle. And you didn't stop there. You also added a $500 dealer processing charge, and then you did something I've never actually seen a dealer attempt to do ever. You're trying to charge me $693.58 in sales commission, as if that's not already built in. A total of almost $2,400. I'm disappointed in you, and I'm not going to pay for any of that. Well, we have to pay our salesman. He's got to eat too, you know. Well, of course he does, which is exactly why you charged me a retail price in the first place. He'll eat good with the commission he's already slated to make. Look, because I was forewarned about this kind of conduct, I brought the FTC regulations, and I have this document here from the Homework Guy website about FTC regulations, and it says, according to FTC enforcement action, dealers also have represented that add-ons are required when in fact they're not. Isn't that great? They're not legally required, and I'm not going to pay for those products and fees. I've already read this whole document through. So under, under section 463.4a, it says, The offering price of a vehicle means the full cash price for which a dealer will sell or finance the motor vehicle to any consumer, excluding only required government charges. You know what's really interesting? Right now, you're behaving exactly like the dealers described as unscrupulous in this outline by the FTC. Do I need to file an FTC complaint against you, or are you just going to make these extra charges disappear? I'm not totally sure that I can do that. You're not sure? On the other hand, you know something that I'm totally sure of? It's that your dealership can't pass an FTC investigative audit of your books without facing tens of millions of dollars in restitution for similar past misdeeds and the huge fines that go along with it. That's what I'm absolutely sure of. Okay, you've made your point. Let's move on and get you out of here. I'll get it written up, no add-ons or extra fees. I also want the title and licensing fees to be exact, you know, to the penny on this report, not approximations like you have. And I will read the entire contract that you write up and no mistakes. Will do. Boom. That's what we're talking about, friends. Great job, Liz. Friends, you might have convinced yourself that it's impossible to happen this way, yet tons of reports from viewers coming in from all around the country who are using these FTC regs and reporting that the tune of the dealer's music changes the moment the FTC documents are on the table. We are definitely onto something here. Go back and rewatch this a few times until you have it down and then print off the FTC regs from our website and you're ready to go. You know, Liz, I think we'll add this as an outline on our website for people. For sure. And only bring the FTC up in the finance office. By the way, we love it when our videos bring out a dealer troll on our channel and when they trip over themselves to make a comment to reveal their stupidity and lack of character like this dealer using the name Dakota Auto Sales. He says, I love charging all them fees. Nothing but free money and that Honda store did a great job on that old man. If they will give it to you, then you need to take it 100%. Wrong, Dakota. There's a 100% chance that poor Dakota is suffering from brain rot from having sucked <laughs> down too many years of dealer Kool-Aid. Not an ounce of character left in him. No shortage of idiots out there, that's for sure. I also want to remind our viewers that if you're walking the car lots right now, make sure you see Kevin's newest playlist, Car Market Prep Work to help you mentally prepare to do battle with car dealers. And if you happen to be on Facebook, drop by and leave us a comment on a post and give us a like and a follow. And don't forget to visit our website too, thehomeworkguy.com. As we've shared, it's loaded up with free resources for car buyers, and we now offer a blog post there too. For those of you who wish to do a tip, there's a super thanks button now, and the links are in the description box below the video. All right, if you're new here at the Homer Guy channel, as Mary Jo said, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. Join our fast-growing group of subscribers and become a part of our family. Thanks, everyone, for coming back, and to all of our faithful subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homer Guy, signing off with amazing Elizabeth, the Homer Gal, the Homework Guy team is serving up truth and justice in the car business. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.